Uh, the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology. Now you see why I couldn't remember the entire thing. Uh, and the acronym is even long too. The U-T-A-U-T -T is the acronym uh, that, it, uh, that the textbook refers to this as. So it identifies <clears throat> key factors that directly determine the user's acceptance and usage of IT. Usefulness, ease of use, um, management expectations, and facilitating conditions. Um, and all of these things, if you think about it, usefulness and ease of use, those are all perceptions from the user. So the manager's perception of usefulness and ease of use is going to be different than the user's acceptance, uh, uh, usefulness and ease of use, or their perception of that. And this gets into a lot of things like self-efficacy, whether or not you feel like you have the ability to uh, learn a new technology, whether you what feels to me like it's easy to use, I promise you is different than what everybody else feels like is easy to use. And things that you might find easy are difficult for me. We're all different. We all have different strengths, experiences. Um, and so usefulness and ease of use is something that is uh, very uh, individual. But it's the manager's job to understand that and to try to help users understand the usefulness and that it is easy to use and to understand uh, what their expectations are as the manager. So there's a lot of things in here. Again, this is a great model. Three great, great models that, that we've already presented to you. Uh, the Unified Theory of Acceptance and Use of Technology, the Change Management Continuum, and then the table that just shows reasons why people uh, resist change. These are all very critical theories for you to hang on to throughout this course and throughout your program. Also, Diffusion of Innovation. Uh, this is developed by Rogers, and there's a chart here, uh, figure 1.6. Uh, this shows, as you go through here, there's exp explanations in the book about who the innovators are, who the early adopters are, the early majority, the late majority, and the laggards, and reasons why people fall into those categories. Now, here's the thing, is each individual person within your organization will fall into typically one of these categories when it comes to technology. Now, personal technology will be in one area. Um, I consider, I'm probably an early adopter. In some things, I'm an innovator with personal technology, but most things I'm an early adopter um, on personal technology, you know, if it's, uh, you know, budget uh, allowing. Um, if the budget was not a problem, I'd be an innovator. I'd, I'd buy every new gadget on the market. So my model for personal technology is different than my model for business technology. As associate dean, I have to think about different things when I'm thinking about spending money uh, on behalf of the of the college of business here at the University of West Georgia. So I fit into a different category based on the hat that I'm wearing, if it's my personal hat or my, my faculty hat or my associate dean hat. And so different roles require a different perspective. Well, your employees are the same way. And so as they fit into a different category, their ability to accept change, their willingness to accept change is going to be different. And you as the manager have a very tangled web to work with here because you've got different people with different perspectives, different innovation adoption model mindsets. You've got different uh, pers perspectives of usefulness and ease of use. You've got different understandings of the technology and its application. And here you are as the manager, and you're looking at this thing, and you're saying, okay, at the end of the day, the bottom line's got to be in the in, in the good. We've got to be in the black on the bottom line with this project. I'm looking for a positive ROI. Now, how can I get the technology that I know can do it? I know the technology can help accomplish the strategy, help improve this process, help create efficiency. But now I've got these people over here that are very different in accepting diffusion of innovation. They're very different with change. They're very different with their attitudes and perceptions. How am I, the manager, going to bridge this gap? At one time or another, you've been on one side of this. You've either been the technology guy, you've been the, the adopter, or the one who didn't adopt it, but the one who was told they were going to use it. You've been on one side or the other. How did you feel? How would you have appreciated if there was a manager in the middle who could speak the language on both sides? That's why managers are so important to change within an organization when it comes to technology. So the last part, the manager's roles, 
uh, finding the right IT and then smoothing the way and then ensuring that the risks are mitigated. So you've got to look and of course there's some technical stuff here. You've got to make sure that, that your assets are secure from unwanted intrusion, loss or, or alteration or change. Personal data has to be secured and then in case of disaster you have to have business continuity plans in place. Not as much, uh, I'm not going to talk about this as much because it's in the book, it's easy to understand. I really wanted to focus on that middle part there about the role of the manager within dealing with the people because that part is critical. Not that the other parts aren't critical, you can't leave any of it out. But that middle part there is the part that's so difficult because you're dealing with people. It's easy to create a business continuity plan. It's easy to say, okay, well, if we have a tornado, or if we have a hurricane, or if we're broken into, or if there's a fire, what are we going to do? We can sit down and we can uh, sub uh, objectively think through how we're going to deal with that situation. We can objectively think through how we're going to secure personal data and protect individual privacy rights. We can objectively think through that, but the subjective stuff that's dealing with people. How are we going to get people on board? How are we going to market this to the people? That's the part that I wanted to spend more time on in this first video. So what if managers do not participate in IT projects? What's going to happen then? Well, you're going to have failed projects, a lot of wasted time, a lot of wasted effort, a lot of wasted money. And again, it's not usually a lack of fit between the technology and the process. Sometimes it is but usually it's a lack of willingness for the manager to do what needs to be done to bring the people along to the point where they need to be to be able to uh, smooth the path and then uh, put in the people effort to get the people on board. That's where the failures typically happen. Proper involvement by managers required to obtain lasting value from investments and the involvement of the manager should be throughout the project and not just intermittent. In summary, the three critical responsibilities, I like the, you know, you've probably heard this presentation model, you tell them what you're going to tell them, and you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. So we started with identifying opportunities, smoothing the path, mitigating risks, that's what we've talked about, and then effective users of IT um, obtain value from investments that align with their needs, and are well managed and well executed. So this concludes uh, the video on chapter one, and um, I hope that you will now take time to read through the text, because there's a lot of good information there, and especially hang on to all of those theories. Those, this is a good example of how the research that's done in higher education is so important for business practice, because those theories are, are just great for you to have in your toolkit to know that they're there, to know that uh, they exist, to go to them for reference, not that you're going to follow them word for word and line by line, but uh, to know that they're there so that if you're ever implementing something or introducing a change, you, you've got a model that's been studied and tried and tested and, and proven to uh, have a, a high success rate. So those are good things to know about, and I hope that you enjoy the video and I hope that you enjoy the chapter.